couple of weeks ago, I purchased a real life spring lock to better understand how the infamous spring lock suits from Five Nights at Freddy's actually work. Look, look, this one, this is one right here, a real life, look at that, real life spring lock. To recap for anyone who hasn't seen it, I found that on their own, spring locks really aren't that dangerous. I mean, it's basically, it's basically just a big pen. However, if you try and build a Chuck E. Cheese Gundam suit out of them, and for some inexplicable reason, decide to invest in springs with enough strength to crush bone, then you're probably in for a bad time. Like seriously, I cannot stress how bad of an idea this is. Only a true idiot would conceive of something this dumb. You would have to be a certifiable moron if you ever attempted anything remotely close to this. So being the smart and logical people that I know you are, there was one comment that I got over and over and over again. When are you gonna build one? Richard, hit that intro. Just as a quick refresher for those of you who aren't an expert in all things Five Nights at Freddy's, which is everyone, the spring lock suits are a special type of animatronic designed for the fictional Chuck E. Cheese inspired restaurant Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and were designed by a dude named William Afton who also happened to be a serial killer. L. The gimmick of these suits is that they can work like regular animatronics up on stage dancing around, but they have a bunch of these spring locks in them, and if you attract them, you can make enough room for a person to fit inside and wear it like a regular mascot costume that can more freely interact with the kids at the restaurant. Seems simple enough, except for the slight issue that if the spring locks fail while you're inside, you get stabbed by a million knives and are instantly and brutally killed. Oops. The main point of these suits in the universe of the games is that they are supposed to be a cheaper alternative to having both a regular animatronic and a matching mascot suit. Now, there are a couple glaring issues with this design. First of all, it does not do that. Spring locks are pretty expensive. This one right here costs about 10 bucks, which on its own isn't too bad, but in order to have enough to build a whole suit, you would need 30, 40, I'm not sure, plus the hardware to attach them to the frame, whatever you're putting on the end of the spring, all of that adds up pretty quick to the point where, without knowing exactly how these suits are supposed to be constructed in the games, I can guarantee you that it would be far cheaper to just have a regular animatronic and buy a separate mascot costume. And I'll be honest, YouTube ain't paying me that much, so unfortunately, I will not be building a real life functional animatronic spring lock suit in my one bedroom apartment in the span of a week. Sorry. What I can do though, is take you through the entire engineering design process and come up with a comprehensive plan for how to build one of these suits in real life and crucially design it in a way where it won't murder the person inside if it's a little bit humid out. First, let's recap exactly how these suits are implied to work in the games because I actually made a slight mistake in my first video. Originally, I thought that the spring locks were used to pull all of the motors and supports and stuff out of the way so that you could get in with all of those mechanical bits still inside the suit, sitting in the place between your body and the actual costume. So when the spring locks fail, all of that stuff gets pushed back towards you, and again, it's a bad time. However, a bunch of you let me know in the comments that this isn't entirely correct. Instead, the spring lock suits have a solid endoskeleton, basically just a bare bones, skinny robot. The spring locks are all attached to the inside of the costume and have pins on the end of them. So when the spring lock unlocks, the spring 
pushes the pin into a hole on the endoskeleton, which holds the suit in place. Seems like you could accomplish the same thing with, I don't know, a screw, but whatever. Then, when you want to turn it back into a suit, you pull the springs back, activate the locks, and pull the whole endoskeleton out. So, the same basic principles apply, you'll still definitely die if the spring locks fail, just a small distinction that will become important later. That was the only mistake from that video, other than that, everything I said was 100% correct. Just that one thing. Also, something else that I've learned since that video, I always assumed that these spring lock suits were made of cloth and foam, so you know, they're like soft and squishy and kids can run up and hug them, but apparently they are actually made from a series of hard plastic shells. Sure, maybe they put like fake fur over the top or something, it's hard to tell, but that means that canonically spring trap stalking around in FNAF 3 would sound like this. Okay, now that we all have an understanding of how the original spring lock suits work and why they suck, it's time to fix it. So here's the plan. First, I'll lay out the requirements for this suit. Then I'll go through the basic conceptual design for how to make the thing safer. And finally, I'll create an actual engineering grade 3D model to show the whole thing in action. And you can do with that information what you will. We begin with the first step in every engineering project, defining the requirements. Before we start designing our spring lock suit, we need to have a good idea of what we are designing it to do. As one of my college professors once put it, if we don't know where we're going, how will we know when we get there? That's right, F***ing Gandalf taught me engineering. For our case, I've settled on three major requirements. First of all, it needs to be able to function as both an animatronic and as a costume. That's kind of the whole point. Second, it needs to use spring locks to accomplish this. Normally, you want to avoid requirements like this saying it has to use this specific mechanism. That's just not a good practice and you're limiting yourself unnecessarily. But this is a video about how to make a spring lock suit. It'd be a little weird if I just said, don't. And the third, and let's be honest, most important requirement is safety. No matter what happens, whether the suit is functioning normally or malfunctions in some catastrophic way, the people operating it shouldn't have to worry about being skewered from every angle and then turning into a ghost, haunting the very robot that killed them and spending the rest of eternity haunting various pizza places while people continually try to set them on fire even though it's been shown time and time again that that doesn't really do anything. Which I mean, seems like a pretty basic ass to me. You know what seems like a pretty basic ass to me? Asking you to help me take that subscribe button to Slam Town. That little bright red devil has been running its mouth. It's been flapping its gums. I even heard it insult your local sports team. So I think we need to hit it with a classic tag team double decker finger jab mega slam combo. On the count of three, I need you to give that red subscribe button cowering below this video a nice solid poke. Send it reeling my way and I'll finish it off with a slam. All right. One, two, three. So with those three requirements in mind, let's get on to step two, designing. The idea of the costume basically being a shell over top of a fully functional endoskeleton that you can pull out is Actually, as much as I hate to give Afton any sort of credit, a pretty good idea. The endoskeleton itself can have a pretty basic construction. You don't have to worry about pulling it apart and putting it back together. And it means that none of the motors or beans or anything will be inside the suit at the same time as the person wearing it. The fact that they have a robot capable of walking upright in the 80s is insane. That sort of tech costs a fortune today. So a far more realistic design would be one where the legs are bolted to the ground and only the upper body moves. You know, doing a, doing a little bit of this. A little, a little, a little, a little this action, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, you, don't tell me you don't want some pizza right now. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. The main problem, of course, 
comes with the spring locks. We need them to be able to hold the outer shell in place over the endoskeleton while it's in animatronic mode, and we need them to be able to retract the pins so that we can pull the shells off so someone can wear it. But no matter how you slice it, having spring locks lining the hole inside of the suit pointing directly at the person is bad. That, that's real bad. Like I mentioned earlier, you totally could just use some screws to hold the shells onto the endoskeleton and then just take out the screws when you want to wear it. That's probably the simplest answer, but I guess you could argue that it would take too long to take all the screws out. And anyway, that's far too logical. This is Freddy's, damn it. Give me spring locks or give me death. Actually, you know what? I think it's the same either way. So, if we are insisting on using spring locks in this suit, then we have to come up with some other solution, some way that eliminates the risk of unwanted acupuncture. But, but I mean, I'll be honest, I don't see how that's possible. We need these pins to hold everything in place, and this is the only way. I mean, no matter what you do, these spring locks are gonna be pointed at the person wearing the suit. It would take nothing less than a certifiable genius, nay, nay, an act of God to come up with a solution that is as effective while remaining perfectly safe. I am but a mere man. How can we possibly use a spring lock in a manner such as this while eliminating all the risks? Done. Instead of mounting the spring locks on the inside of the shells and having the pins slide into the endoskeleton, why not just have them mounted on the endoskeleton and the pins slide into holes on the shells? I mean, it accomplishes the exact same thing, except now the spring locks come out with the rest of the endoskeleton, leaving just the mascot costume behind. No sharp metal bits, no mechanisms that could fail, no risk of death, easy as that. It took me like, 30 seconds to come up with. If you're not sold yet or having trouble visualizing what I'm saying, don't worry because we're moving on to step three where yeah, I made a whole 3D model using real life professional grade engineering CAD software. It's actually not as hard as it sounds. It, I mean, it's not super pretty, but I had a day, cut me some slack. So we start off with the endoskeleton. This is a pretty simple model just to give you an idea of the shape. A real one would have to have motors and all the joints, a power supply somewhere, and probably a lot more supports, but you get the idea. And then the suit consists of a bunch of shells that just go around it. Now, if I were making a real suit, I would probably have one solid foam and cloth costume with plastic parts embedded into it that give it some structure and something for us to hold on to, but you can't really model stuff like that in here. So for now, I'll just show the plastic parts and you can use your imagination. Say we're trying to attach something onto the shoulder here. All we would need to do is take a spring lock and mount it on here with some nice heavy bolts or something. Instead of a needle thin sharp pin on the end, I would probably use something a bit thicker with a rounded or even flat end. Because why would you use a razor sharp pin? I, why would you do that? You didn't have to do that, but you did. Were you trying to do a bad job? Because you did. Positioned over that is this plastic shoulder piece, which has this hollow round part protruding out here. The cylinder from the spring lock can extend, fit into that hole, and boom, you're good to go. You would then presumably fill this part here with foam or something like that to make it a bit more comfortable to wear, maybe add in some more supports or something, I don't know. As for the actual spring, I would probably use a tension spring. The ones in the game and the ones that I have here are both compression springs, so you push the spring in to lock it, and then when you want to release it, the spring pushes the cylinder back out. You could use the same thing here. It's probably not that dangerous because even if the spring locks did fail, it would probably be while the endoskeleton is sitting off to the side, not in use. And if you use a reasonable strength spring, even if your hand was, I mean, like right in front of it, like 
you probably wouldn't get hurt. If you went with tension springs, that would mean that you would stretch them out and lock them in place when you're putting them in the suit. This would probably be better for more firmly holding the shells in place. If these springs are locked when they're extended, they won't be moving around while the animatronic is in motion. And if they ever did fail, it would pull the pins inward, not shoot them out, which is always safer. This does mean that in the event that these spring locks failed while in animatronic mode, the suit would fall off the endoskeleton while on stage, which obviously isn't ideal, but honestly, if you get real good spring locks and not whatever crank BS William was using, I mean like, this thing ain't failing. Then all you have to do is rinse and repeat that design for all the shells and you're done. When you want an animatronic, you put the endoskeleton inside the suit and you push all the cylinders out. If you're smart, you could probably design this in a way where all the holes and cylinders are self-aligning so you don't have to worry about like positioning everything exactly correct. I mean, the original design would have had to do the same thing anyway. When all the cylinders are out, the shells will be held in place, ready to go. When you want to wear it as a suit, you retract all the cylinders, you pull everything out of there, and you are left with a simple cloth, foam, and plastic costume that will not, crucially, turn you into a meat kebab. So, with that in mind, let's get the rest of those shells on there. People of the internet, I am proud to present my completed model of a real life spring lock suit. Step aside, William Afton. The big boys are here to show you how it's done. Hmm. I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs>